Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, my name's Mo. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to sashiko your clothing. So whether you want to upcycle, repair or customize your clothing just to show them a bit of love and make them a bit more jazzy. So if that interests you, stick around. So for this project, just to make it really easy for you if you are a beginner, I have linked a series of videos down below just to kind of show you each stage to make it very, very easy. So for this project, I will be using a pair of dungarees that I already have with a hole in the knee, which is just way too big and it's a bit chilly. So I'm just gonna jazz these up and um, basically close that hole in the jeans. So for this project, I picked up this book, which is called The Ultimate Sashiko Source Book. So it's by Susan Briscoe. It's really good if you're a beginner and it has tons and tons and tons of patterns in the back just to make it really easy for you. Yeah, so I'm gonna link this down below for you guys if you are interested. Okay, so let's look at the jeans in slightly more detail. Okay guys, so I've just laid out a few of the things that you might need for your project. So I have got patches of fabric that I have just used pinking shears to cut around the edges just so that they don't fray, but I think if they're on the inside it shouldn't matter too much. Um, I've got some tools that I'm gonna use for marking, um, some cotton just to tack on or based on the patch underneath. I've got my sashiko thread here, so I've gone for a, and I've got my sashiko thread here, so it's a mixture of colours which I think will look quite nice. I've got my thimble and my needle, so I haven't gone for the traditional um, needle and thimble because I wanted to use what I already had, so you can go ahead and do that or you can um, buy the specialist equipment which I will link in the comments below. I've got my embroidery scissors. Um, I've got my piece of fabric that I've just done a few samples on which you might want to have a go at doing before you start your final project. I've got my pins just so that I can mark, um, pin my fabric patch onto my dungarees so it's nice and smooth. And then I've got um, some rulers that I use to make my grid, which you may need. I've got the book that I've used to help me with this project. I've got my masking tape here that I'm gonna to use to attach um, the grid to the fabric just so everything stays aligned. I have got my pattern marker which I'm going to use to mark the grid onto my fabric but you can use um, perhaps the blunt end of a pencil, you can use anything you can get your hands on, you don't have to use this at all. I've got my copy paper here which I'm going to use to trace off the grid and then I've got a grid that I have drawn out. So it's not the neatest thing, you can actually print grids online, you can buy these patterns already made, so um, you can make it even easier for yourself if you go ahead and buy those things, but I'm kind of going for like a very basic, something you can start straight away at home. Okay, so the first thing I did with this project was I chose the pattern I wanted to use, and I am going for um, this pattern here, so it's a rice stitch variation, but I'm going, going for a variation on top of that, which is this pattern here. Um, so it just, yeah, it's very similar to the original pattern. So what I have done is I've just stitched a few samples. So I've used embroidery thread here and sashiko thread here. So if you're interested to find out what the difference is between the two, I have linked the video down below so that you can work out whether you want to go ahead and buy the specialist thread or just use embroidery thread if that's something you already have at home. So I'm gonna go for this pattern that you can see here, which I practice. So um, this is a good example of how you build up your sashiko threads. So this is the basic running stitch which I've shown you in a separate video. And then you turn your fabric around and you can create these crosses and then you um, can add diagonals. Basically, this will form the basis of quite a few patterns and then you can add on it. And this is the pattern that I've come to at the end. So this is my sample, so I suggest you guys um, go for a sample just so you get used to the thread and um, the spacing of the stitches. Like I mentioned in the video down below in the description, you kind of want to go for four to eight stitches for every 2.5 centimeters or inches, but really the key is that you want your stitches to be as even as possible. Um, but it's something that I think takes a bit of practice and I'm not perfect at it yet, so don't worry too much. You can have a grid system to help you if you are a beginner. Um, so it looks way more complicated than it is. The joy is that it's very, very simple. You're just using diagonal lines to create these effects. So it all comes together at the end, really. Um, yeah, it's very exciting. So if you go ahead and look through 
either this book or a separate book, or I'm sure there are lots of blog posts online, it's gonna tell you which grid system to use. So this is using a five, five mil by five mil um, square grid. So you can use as well, I know I mentioned that I, I drew this out, you can just get a graph paper with a five mil or one mil, one centimeter, sorry, or whatever size grid you want, just to make it really easy for you again. So this has a square grid system, but looking through the book here, you can see that a few of the designs work on a um, more of a rectangular, more of a rectangular based grid, and then you can add circles. So basically, this is a really good guide for you. So like I mentioned, I'm going for a five by five square grid. So the grid that I have drawn out is 15 centimeters by 15 centimeters. So what you really want to do ideally is measure how big your opening is. So I've gone for 15 centimeters. So you wanna make sure the fabric piece that you're gonna be adding underneath your, um, any hole that you want to fix or even if you don't want to fix a hole if you just want to add a patch which looks quite cool you want to make sure the fabric overlaps so that you've got some um, I guess strength in it and it's not too close to the frayed edge which is obviously the weakest point so I went I measured it and I just went for 15 centimeters um, by 15 centimeters which basically gives me sort of about a 1.5 overhang from the top and from the bottom so once I'd measured this out, what you want to do is you want to choose a selection or choose choose a piece of fabric that you want to patch. So I pink and sheared the edges of these and basically I decided to go for this colour denim rather than a coloured piece of fabric. So what I will say to you guys is obviously you want the the markings to show. So you can use chalk and I tried chalk, um, but it rubs out, it, I rubbed out as I was going along, so it wasn't as permanent. And you can get air erasable markers, which work really nicely on synthetic fabrics, but I tend to find they fade, they were fading too quickly on the denim. So like I said, I have just gone for the carbon copy paper. So this is in a yellow, which should show up quite nicely on the denim, but just bear that in mind, if you've got a darker fabric, you want to go for an appropriate color um, copy paper, if that's what you're going for, and vice versa, if you're using a light copy paper. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, I'm going to decide which side of the fabric I'm gonna use. So if I just show you, I'm gonna pop this inside of my trouser leg. And yeah, I quite like that color. It's very subtle, but the um, for me, the stitching is kind of a feature. So this is just a patch of fabric that I already had in my scrap bin. So go ahead and grab some fabric out of your scrap bin. It's a good way to get through um, all of those offcuts. So that fits quite nicely. So I'm gonna work on this side. This is gonna be the top fabric. So what I'm gonna do is I want the grid to be on the underside so that you can't see it from the outside of your jeans. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open out my carbon paper. And so when you are marking, you wanna make sure you're marking really hard to get those lines through as much as possible. I don't think it's gonna be perfect, um, but it's just a reference point for you to make it easy. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure it's all quite central. And then I'm gonna grab some masking tape and I'm just going to make sure this is all nicely attached to my, just make sure it's gonna line up quite nicely. So move the carbon paper over slightly. So I'm just gonna use masking tape to attach it to the table and to the fabric itself. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna grab a ruler and whatever you're using to mark your um, pattern. Okay guys, so, <clears throat> okay, so now that you've drawn your grid on, 
Now is the big reveal and you'll work out whether it's, how nicely it's shown up. Okay, so there's our grid system on our piece of fabric. Let me just zoom in so you guys can see a little closer. But basically you can see that we've got a nice grid system drawn out on our fabric now. Okay, so now that we've got this system drawn out, what we wanna do is you want to grab your item <clears throat> of clothing and then we're going to pop the patch into our it's all overhanging quite nicely so we've got the patch inside of our trousers here you're going to grab your pins um, you can use safety pins if you want and then pop your hand up inside of the trouser leg and you're basically just going to pin make sure the fabric is nicely smoothed out so i tend to use for these projects really nice strong big pins for this denim Okay, so you've pinned that in place. So what you wanna do is make sure that your patch is pretty well straight in there. Um, it might be slightly wonky, but that feels quite straight to me. So yeah, so that feels quite straight inside of there for me. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna grab your thread and you just wanna um, tack that on in place. So I've got my massive needle. So I would suggest you double up your thread so that it's nice and strong. So your patch should be tacked in in place and I'm going to turn this right side through and then I'm going to remove those pins. And now let's get on with the stitching. So I finished the dungarees here. So um, it took quite a long time. So this is probably something if you're a beginner that you want to do on a weekend or perhaps kind of pick up and, and put down, kind of like knitting. So um, I love it so much. I think I should have um, taken back some of the lighter color just to show the darker color because it seems to be more effective on darker colors. So hopefully you found those videos useful and you're going to go out there and show some love to some clothing that perhaps you don't wear anymore or that you kind of want to jazz up and put your own touch on it. So if you found any of these videos useful do consider subscribing and liking down here and I will see you all in another video. Bye!